thank you so much uh, for joining us here at the 92nd Street Y. Thank you for joining us at home. We begin tonight with President Obama taking an unexpected victory lap today after what has been a remarkable period of legislative accomplishment. The big to-do list for the Democratic Party and this presidency breaking out in a sudden rash of check marks. I think it's fair to say that this has been the most productive post-election period we've had in decades. And it comes on the heels of the most productive two years that we've had in generations. One thing I hope people have seen during this uh, lame duck, I am persistent. I am persistent. I, you know, if I believe in something strongly, I stay on it. This lame duck Congress has been in session for 26 days, 26 days. And after what were essentially non-existent expectations going into this, maybe they'll name a few post offices or something. Well, probably not. <laughs> Look what's happened. Look at what's happened. They've been arguing and fussing and fighting for months in Washington. But tonight, the tax bill has been passed, delivered to the president and signed. Good evening. A landmark vote on Capitol Hill today appears to signal a new era in gay rights in this country while abolishing long-held military tradition and policy. The Senate late today voted to repeal the don't ask, don't tell policy against gays serving openly in the military. The Senate today passed the biggest overhaul of this nation's food safety system system in decades. The resolution of ratification is agreed to. With Vice President Biden presiding, the Senate passed New START, the arms control treaty with Russia the president had lobbied for relentlessly. One other item in the past column, that bill to provide health benefits for 9-11 first responders who became ill when they were working at Ground Zero, Brian. What a day in Washington. What a day in Washington. What a 26 days in Washington. 26 days that were expected to be a big nothing burger. Usually it takes Congress 26 days to agree that they need another 26 days before they can start 26 days of debate. <laughs> Today, one of my favorite people in Washington, a veteran NBC News producer who I will not name because it will embarrass her, uh, but who has seen it all and who is therefore amazed by nothing. Uh, today, she told us that um, she has never seen another day like today in Washington and all the time she has been there. If I were President Obama, I would have called a press conference today, too. I would have called a press conference today to cap a day that, that began with him officially signing the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. After two long years of legislative maneuvering, Mr. Obama concluded that signing statement, that signing ceremony, by saying, quote, this is done. And this is part of the quote. <laughs> Just a few hours later, President Obama saw the Senate ratify his nukes treaty with Russia, his signature foreign policy concern, the thing he most wanted during this lame duck session. Then, right after that, Congress passed a bill to provide health care coverage for 9-11 first responders. Something that Republicans something that Republicans had been delaying for weeks and that had been many, many, many times pronounced impossible. All of that happened in one day. And that is on top of the rest of the things this Congress has gotten done, with which you are familiar. Health reform, Wall Street reform, credit card reform, student loan reform. This much maligned United States Congress, and trust me, I have at times been maligner in chief. Uh, this Congress, in the end, has accomplished more than almost any other in U.S. history. This was the headline at Bloomberg News today. No Congress since the 1960s makes as much law as this one. If you support President Obama's agenda, this has been an exhilarating finish to this first two years. No, Democrats have not gotten everything they wanted, both in terms of unfinished business, stuff they still want to work on, and compromises they've had to make toward getting everything they wanted, but still. And, you know, on some of the unfinished business, the president today was still working on it, making an impassioned case today for immigration reform, saying that the DREAM Act, at a minimum, will still get done, even though it has not yet. Here's the thing, though. Can't be lame duck all year round. In just a, a few short weeks, Republicans are about to have a lot more power in Washington. And what we have learned during this lame duck session could be really instructive in that regard. We've learned not just what Democrats wanted to do. That was fairly transparent. We've not learned just what Democrats will fight for and how they'll fight for it. That is evident. We've also learned what Republicans will fight for. What are Republican priorities? When Republicans have more power in the next Congress, when they are called upon to exert more leadership in Washington, what will they do with their leadership? What will they do with the, the, the power that they have when the new Congress starts in January? 
During this lame duck session, Republicans fought for less health care funding for 9-11 first responders. They fought for less safety regulation of our food supply. They fought to zero out funding for health reform. They fought to zero out funding for Wall Street reform. In terms of the stopgap spending bill, they won both of those. They put as their first priority bonus tax cuts for income over a quarter million dollars a year. They said they would do nothing at all unless they got that. That was priority number one. They fought to completely eliminate the estate tax for the very richest estates in the country. And they fought to end unemployment benefits for Americans who are out of work. I know this is not news to you, but this is, this is important going forward. Unemployment benefits. When the whole tax cuts compromise was being hashed out earlier this month, the big concession President Obama managed to wring out of the Republicans, right, was this 13-month extension of unemployment benefits. Republicans had been blocking that extension and many other extensions previous to it for a very long time. H having to give that up in exchange for these bonus tax cuts they were so desperate for for the richest people in the country, having to give up extending unemployment benefits was not only painful for Republicans, it was a bridge too far for many Republicans on the right. When this tax cuts deal was announced, it revealed this huge grudge on the right against unemployment. You had all these Republican presidential candidates, all these potential Republican candidates, saying that they did not support the deal because of the extension of unemployment benefits. They're really against unemployment benefits. You had people like Mitt Romney coming out and saying, not only should Republicans not approve that deal, but federal unemployment benefits should be gotten rid of altogether. Unemployment benefits should be privatized. <laughs> Last week, Republican Senator Jim DeMint welcomed eventual Republican presidential candidate Newt Gingrich to South Carolina. When the subject of unemployment, benefit, unemployment benefits came up there, Mr. Gingrich said, quote, I'm opposed to giving people money for doing nothing. I'm opposed to giving people money for doing nothing. Let us review for just a second how Newt Gingrich makes his money. What is it that Newt Gingrich does for his money? What is Newt Gingrich's job? For starters, he hands out fake awards in exchange for cash. <laughs> Probably the greatest thing we've ever done on this show. <laughs> Live Newt girls. It flashes. Ah, anyway, so Newt Gingrich makes money right now uh, running a fake awards for small businesses scam, right? Last year, he tried to give one of his fake awards to a small business called The Lodge in Dallas, Texas. We've covered this quite a bit. Uh, the Lodge is a strip club. I'm told it is a very nice one, as these things go. Uh, Mr. Gingrich offered The Lodge a certificate. Uh, he offered um, them this novelty gavel. And he offered The Lodge a special dinner with the newt. All, of course, in exchange for a $5,000 donation. When Mr. Gingrich realized he was giving one of his fake awards for a $5,000 donation to a strip club, uh, he decided to rescind the award and the dinner invitation. They got to keep the gavel. They gave it to me. Then this month, though, he tried to scam the lodge again. He hit them up for $2,000 this time around, just this month, even after having gone through this whole embarrassing thing. This is how Newt Gingrich makes his money. But he doesn't think that you earned yours. And he wants Republicans to campaign on that idea this year. Newt Gingrich is a direct mail scam artist. He hires the analog equivalent of spammers to troll the yellow pages, looking for businesses he can fool into thinking they are winning a Newt award. And then he cons money out of them for accepting it. You know, the first radio job, first media job I ever had, they were running, somebody was running this scam at the mall that was by the station where I worked. These people would troll the mall, asking people to sign up for a free raffle. And then you'd get a call congratulating you that you won the raffle, you won the sweepstakes, come on down, come to our ceremony to get your award. And the award is a day-long sales pitch to pay for a timeshare. <laughs> That's Newt Gingrich. That's what Newt Gingrich does for a living, the equivalent of this. And he is now trying to run for the Republican nomination for president by saying that people collecting unemployment insurance benefits that they paid into is the government giving people money for doing nothing. And he's against that. And, 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 and he wants Republican candidates to be against that too. Opposition to unemployed people is how the Republican Party is positioning itself heading in to these crucial next two years.
we have put in so much entitlement into our government that we really have spoiled our citizenry and said, you don't want the jobs that are available. Her fellow Nevada Republican, Congressman Dean Heller, recently warned that unemployment benefits may be creating a nation of hobos. He actually used the word hobos. If anything, continuing to pay people unemployment compensation is a disincentive for them to seek new work. Tom Corbett is the Republican candidate for governor in the great state of Pennsylvania. Mr. Corbett explaining at a campaign stop in Elizabethtown, quote, the jobs are there, but if we keep extending unemployment, people are just going to sit there. You know, we should not be giving cash to people who, who basically are just going to go blow it on drugs. You know, maybe this will work for Republicans. Maybe the country will look at that and say, you know what? You guys are right. Those darn unemployed people are a drain. Lazy hobos. They're going to blow all their handouts on drugs. Maybe this will work for Republicans politically. Maybe nobody in the country actually knows an unemployed person or is one themselves. Maybe the country wants this. Guys like Newt Gingrich, who want to run for president, are trying out some other things, too, that they want to be known for being against heading into 2012. I think it's fair to say they have, by killing jobs, become the party of food stamps. The party of food stamps. He's trying this one out. Have you seen this? Democrats have become the party of food stamps. Republicans are building their 2012 presidential campaigns on the contention that there shouldn't be unemployment insurance anymore. Democrats should be derided as the party of food stamps. See the pattern? And it's, it's, it's neat. Maybe that will work for them politically. But what if they put their money where their mouth is? Republicans are about to get more power in Washington. If they get the things that they are advocating for, what will it do to the country? Unemployment benefits and food stamps happen to be the two most economically stimulative things the government can do. Literally, I am not being hyperbolic. Look, they got ranked. You want to stimulate the economy? Most effective things you can do. If Republicans going forward are going to use their newfound power in Congress, and they do have newfound power, if they use it to argue against the things the government can do that are most effective at stimulating the economy, then what will that mean for the country? By attacking and vilifying unemployment benefits and unemployed people and food stamps, they're not just waging war on the people who are being hurt the most by this recession. They are attacking what would help the whole economy the most. They are attacking the economic recovery. If they get what they want, even if they get some of what they want, there will be an economic impact. Whether or not kicking the unemployed when they're down helps Republicans politically, who knows, maybe it will. I don't think so. These policies will have a material impact on whether or not our country gets better, whether or not unemployment comes down, whether or not our country recovers from almost falling into another Great Depression. Would that help Republicans? Do they want that? Nobel Prize winning economist and New York Times columnist Paul Krugman joins us next. 